Hey everyone, welcome to PTSD TV. Today is our Wednesday workshop and today we are talking about the 50 minute myth. So today's episode of PTSD TV is sponsored by Broken to Unbreakable, which is my PTSD and CPTSD recovery program. So for those of you who don't know me, my name's Keeleen. I had CPTSD for over 15 years and now no longer do. And what I do now is I help coach people through their own CPTSD and PTSD recovery through the Broken to Unbreakable program. And this lovely man to my right here is? Brad Shipke, I'm her significant other, and I also had PTSD, and I was there for most of the steps of her own, or her own, Kayleen's recovery journey. And I'm super excited to talk about the 50 minute myth today, because this is one that I I fell into, I think a lot of people fall into, and it's, it's you, you, you probably, think this way too so so stay tuned and learn what the 50 minute myth is because it, it will um rock your world it will it's it this is a this is a great episode yeah this uh, is a so one. so don't touch that dial mm. don't go anywhere <laughs> um so first thing i guess i just want to kind of address before we get rock and rolling here and tell you what we're going to be talking about i you know for those of you who are new to the podcast new to the youtube show Something that we just want to say is like the goal of what we're doing here is to to spread hope, to spread positivity, to give you actions to take and to show you truly and genuinely that you can heal from PTSD. You can heal from CPTSD no matter how long you've had it, no matter what the situation is, you can do this. There is a way to heal. And that's what we're here to kind of to tell you to spread the belief. So it's awesome that you're here. It's awesome that you're showing up. Uh, we love, yep. love having you all. And I just wanted to kind of mention that. I, th I feel like we haven't mentioned that in a few episodes. So for those of you who are new, that's what we're here to do. It is yeah. possible. You can do this. Fully recover. Yeah. Fully, fully, recover. fully, fully. Yeah. So today, the 50-minute myth. We're talking. We're going to be talking about what is the 50-minute myth. We're talking about where most people go wrong, why it's set up this way, all mysterious, right? And then how <laughs> to take recovery into your own hands. And as always, at the end, we're going to give you an action to take. So... Brad, what is the 50 minute myth? The 50 minute myth is that you can heal. You can fully recover from PTSD in only 50 minutes a week, which is the length of the average therapy session. So most people think you can go that you can go to therapy. And I believe this too. When I first started, I was like, okay, I'm going to go to therapy and I'm going to get better. I'm going to do my part in getting better. Most people think that they can go to therapy 50 minutes a week, once a week, and that they will fully recover from PTSD. And this is one of like the biggest myths that is out there. And it, it causes so many people to um, just like just like stay in that pain and, and, and not recover. And that actually it's, it's in some cases it can be counterproductive because it can actually cause you to believe that recovery is impossible just because you you are like you're underestimating the amount of action that you need to take to actually recover from PTSD. So thinking and believing that you only need 50 minutes a week to recover from PTSD and believing that that's what you need is like, that's just a much lower um, estimation of effort that you will need to put in. Like you are going to have to put in a lot more and you're going to have to take, take this into your own hands and do work on your own time to actually get through this and process your past. Is therapy great? Yes, it's awesome. Um, but one session a week is not going to, it's not going to, um, it's not going to heal you. It's not going to allow you to fully recover from your past and PTSD. Um, and you think about it, if it's about an hour a day or hour a week, 52 weeks in a year, if you take two weeks off, it's less than 50 hours, 50 hours a year that you're committed to. 50 hours a year, less than that. And the trick is like what happens, and again, therapy is great, right? And we'll explain kind of why it's set up that way in a minute. But what happens is, you know, you start to think that that's all you need and you start to like almost pat yourself on the back for like doing the things you need to do, right? And you, you think about it here in the United States, there's a thing it's called like it's a 60 minutes it's like get out and play. It's like some government kind of it's it's for kids. It's like go out and mm. play 60 minutes a day. Right. And that's the idea. It's because your your body, you need 60 minutes of activity a day to be like a healthy person. Right. And so they have this big campaign. It's it's the 60 minutes campaign and 60 minutes a day that we're talking about. Right. And so like you need to exercise every day to keep yourself healthy. You need to eat every day. You need to sleep 
every day. Now we're talking about yeah. mental health, right? So to be mentally healthy, you need to work on it every day. And people get caught in this, okay, you know, I, well, yeah, I'm going to therapy and you know, you're going once a week and that's great. But like, honestly, most people don't even go that much, right? They go every other week or every right, few weeks. Right. And what's tricky and like why it's set up this way is because, right? I mean, therapists are humans, right? They run a practice, they run a business and they can only meet with you for so long because they, they help a lot of people. They want to touch a lot of people. And what's important is that this is your journey, right? They're not responsible for your mental health. They're not responsible for your recovery. And so like so, so often I talk to people and they're like, oh, I, well, I've been in therapy for years, for most of my life and it hasn't helped. And it's like, if you, you know, did 10 pushups once a week, for most of your life, you probably wouldn't be strong enough to like compete in a competition or, or have biceps, you know, yeah, like, and then you'd be, and then like most people are like, if, if that's a, the example, like, why am I not jacked? It's like, why am I not jacked? I do 10 pushups a week. And like, that's kind of like the expectation when you're thinking that I'm going to therapy once a week. Why am I not getting better? It's like, it's a very similar concept to that. And when you look at it that way, it's like, uh, well, yeah, like, no, no, no kidding. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like I, we, Brad and I talk about sometimes talk about uh, school, the school system, at least here in the States. Mm -hmm. And when we were growing up, you know, we had, you know, gym, science, math, mm -hmm. and every now and then we would have like a health class. Right. Oh, so yeah. it was like, I don't know, m maybe like once a month. It wasn't all that often that we had a health class and you talked about smoking and drugs and stuff like that. But, you know, we had gym every other day. Right. So mm -hmm. we had gym class, which was, you know, exercise, exercise education yeah. every other day, but not once in our entire career in public education. Did we ever have a class on mental health? Right. So like it's the, the nope. trap is like the myth is that this is this is just what's been going on based on schedules and based on insurance and based on, you know, one therapist being qualified and trying to help as many people as possible. So that's all they can fit, right? They're just human, right? Right, right. And so what that's just like the myth that everyone's fallen into and kind of accepted as reality mm. when like there's there's no kind of backing behind it. There's no reason other than like scheduling. Right. And so right. we just want I have a spot open next week. But great. Okay, great, right. That's what we'll <laughs> that's, do. That's right? the end of it. Yeah. And what's really tricky is because and and these days it is getting talked about a lot more, which is awesome, but you know, not a lot of people know a lot about mental health and mm. how active you need to be, you know, you need to be active in your mental health, just like you are in your physical health, right? Yeah. You want to have a healthy body, healthy lifestyle. You got to eat right. Always. You got to exercise. You got to work on your mental health. Yeah. And so what we're kind of trying to shatter today is that like we, you know, as a society, as whoever believed that this is this is the way to mental health is 15 mm -hmm. minutes a week and then kind of just accept that well that's really all we can do anyway right i mean they can only schedule me in once a week anyway and so that's the tricky thing and it's it's nothing to do with therapy it's nothing to do with the industry it's just how things have fallen into place and we've just developed this misbelief on the subject right right and like it like Haley was saying like we put so much focus on our physical bodies but no like all these external things, but we never really look at the like kind of like the immaterial things that we can't see like in our minds and like you need to exercise daily and you need to work on your mind daily. And I'm going to, I'm just going to share a quick story about kind of my experience with this. Cause like in the beginning, this is what I believed. I would go to therapy once a week and I was like, okay, like it's great. And I like, like talking about things because it kind of like gets some things off my chest, but it's not really solving that core issue inside of me. And like, why is that happening? And I really, after probably a year of doing that the wrong way, I, I learned that it was, it was something that I had to consistently do like work out every day. And I, I do that now. Um, and I also work out my mind every day now, but it's something I have to put in consistent effort daily but also there's going to be stretches, stretches of time where I'm not going to have to put in a really, really intense amount of work to go, go, get through those really hard spots. So the way that I like to think of it is like interval training, right? So like in, interval training is like when you, like you're, like you're on a bike, right? And you're going like at a, a normal kind of easy speed for like five minutes and then you sprint for like one minute, whatever. And you just kind of cycle through that for the duration of your workout. And the way I think of that with just like just kind of daily like 
like, I mean, in everybody's life, but with like PTSD recovery, it's like, um, you're going to be consistently working on your mental health every day, whether that's an hour, two hours, 30 minutes, whatever it is, you're working on it consistently to heal over time. But then there's going to be times where you're going to have to spend, like there were times in my recovery where I literally spent a week and I spent 50 to 60 hours just working on my mental health. And like, that was what I needed. And like, there are going to be moments in like your life and your recovery where you might need that as well. Um, and like, that is like the, 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 the biggest lesson that I learned from, from going through this and like the 50 minute myth. And like, I was, I'm able to get like a year's worth of mental health work in a single week. So like, you can see the power of that. Like I'm able to condense a year's worth of mental health work into a single week by dedicating myself. So I'm able to recover like a million times faster than somebody else. And, and the other person probably wouldn't recover because like it would take them like, I don't even know. I don't even know if you could because there'd be so much like, you'd be just like moving forward and then moving backwards. That's kind of what it is. It's like you, like 50 minutes you get like, it's almost like coping because you just like, you move forward a little bit during the 50 minutes, but then throughout the week you kind of beat yourself back down and then you move forward a little bit. So you're kind of just staying in the same spot. Um, but that's the best way I can relate to it. And I think that's that. a that's a great relation, right? Because it, when we're talking about time and like, there's amazing therapies out there. There's over a hundred different types of therapy. Yeah. So like, you know, f- there's going to be some people that listen to this that are like, nope, like my therapist is great. We do great work and I, I feel improvements every week. And that is great, right? Yeah. And you're definitely in that like 1%, kind of 5% of people. Yeah. That's awesome. But there's, there's hundreds of types of therapy out there. And there's, you know, something important is therapists are human. And you're human and now you're dealing with schedules, right? So you're talking about time and if you, if you personally have the right tools, you can do this, right? And yes, there are steps that should be taken with a professional in certain cases, right? But, right. you know, when Brad's talking about he's he's spending 40, 60 hours a week on himself, like he really means that, right? Because yeah. he has the tools, the strategies, and the tactics that genuinely help him process his past right and process what he's been through and again like what what we're talking about here obviously is trauma related right we're talking about ptsd and cptsd and it's really really that's an important piece right and you know when you when you break it down to time right and like brad said like you he could put a week's work of worth worth of work in and it would not even equate to a year seeing someone professionally that's really important and that's our third point here right you have to take recovery into your own hands because it is your life ultimately Mm -hmm. right and so like again therapy is great there's absolutely a place for it but their life is not they're 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 invested in your life for for that time right and yes they do care about you and yes they are human but you need to be your own biggest advocate if it's not working for you leave Right. And that's Mm -hmm. a huge lesson, too, and probably a whole nother topic. But like you need to take recovery in your own hands. You need Mm -hmm. to find the tools, find the strategies. You need to read. You need to do trainings, you know, show it to the podcast. That's awesome. You're already taking amazing steps, Mm -hmm. you know, keep learning, find books, find experts on the subject to help you take this into your own hands, because just that 50 minutes is not enough. No, it just isn't. And that's 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 just the reality of it, because most people that we see out there are completely underestimating what they personally need to do. This is your journey. This is like 100% your responsibility. Like your th- it's not your therapist's responsibility to, you know, do the work for you. You know, like you need to do the work. It's your mind. It's your past. And I'm not saying that in a harsh way. That's just like the reality of the situation where like, it's your life. Like you, you need to like take responsibility for it and like learn the right tools, work on yourself. It sucks, dude. When I took those <laughs> weeks, like, like when I took those weeks where I was like, like working on my mental health for like 50, 60 hours that week is like, I really don't want to do this. But the funny thing about that too, is like, because it's painful, it hurts. It hurts. Like going through like your past and the traumatic things that you went through and like processing those things. But you get to the end of that and you're like, wow, I put in all this effort and I really, and I saw a tangible result. Like, you know that feeling? I know all you guys probably feel that feeling of like in your chest or in your heart or somewhere in your body that is always, always tense. And 
it's that part of you that gets like triggered. You know, it's a part of you that's like always waiting for like, like something to happen to just like come out and explode out of you. Um, when you're able to know the right techniques and then take that time, that dedicated time, like that, that week that I took or that I, I, I took many times, um, you see that tangible results and you feel that part of your body, like releasing that tension. So like you go through this pain and you actually see tangible results, which is like the most amazing thing, but you need to take this into your own hands. That's like, that's, that's the whole um, premise of this episode is that you need to start taking responsibility for your recovery, your healing. Don't wait for the VA to freaking approve your, your therapy sessions. Don't wait for your insurance company. Like some insurance insurances are like, okay, you can go to therapy like once a month, once a week. It's like, don't, don't let it be dependent on your insurance. Don't let it be dependent on the VA or anybody else. It's like, you need to take responsibility for this, for yourself and for your life. This is your life, man. Like, this is like, this is your life. This is like your family. These are your loved ones. It's like, you need to take responsibility for that. And like, we want to help you do that. And like, this is the part where we're like, we're trying to tell you the truth because like, if you are going to therapy now, maybe you're doing this, you're in the cycle of like, I'm going to therapy every week, but things are getting better and I'm just getting more and more hopeless. And like, that's kind of where we were. Like, this is the point where you're at and this is the decision you need to make and like commit to yourself, your recovery and commit to taking responsibility for your life and for recovering. Cause like at the end of the day, it's you, it's your life and you're going to have to do all the work. You're going to have to do all the reading, all the processing in your own mind. I can't process your past in my mind. Nobody can process your past in some, like in their mind. It's like, it's your mind. It's your past. You have to deal with it. And that's really like just realizing that you are not going to heal 50 minutes a week is how you take recovery into your own hands. That is how you take that shift. And knowing that truth, that that's just not the reality. It's like, you're gonna have to put in a lot more effort than that. That's just the way it is. Bingo, That's bingo. awesome. This is one of those times where, you know, we want to give you a hug, but we want to ki- give you a kick in the butt at the same time because this is the truth, right? And yes, keep going to therapy. If you like it, yes, do your thing. Yes, yes We're not absolutely. saying don't go to therapy. We're yeah, saying we're not it's saying give up those 50 minutes, yeah. right? Continue with those 50 minutes. Add more on top of that. This is your life. And I was just kind of thinking as you were talking there, Brad, that we, this is something we still, now like we don't, we've processed our past. Like we're, I mean, we're in a, an amazing position but just like exercise, right? Just like we exercise every day, we we work on our mental health every day, right? right? So something that we do is we still do meditations, we still do visualizations every morning, we still do, I still do my mind palace before I fall asleep. It's the best thing because yeah. I love it. Yeah. And um, you add all that up. That those are things that we're doing every day, right? We're still reading, we're still learning, we're still growing. Exercise is actually part of mental health, right? It is so like in a huge way. we're still doing these things, and so when you at the core, at the foundation, you know, can realize that it, you, if this is a huge part of, this is almost like the only part of your life, right? The only thing that you're guaranteed in life is you, is you, your mind, you, your body. Like that's all that you're guaranteed and all you're ever in control of, right? right? And so it is so, so important that we, that we take this into our own hands that, you know, read books on mental health, read books on, I mean, whatever you're interested in, reading is just good for your brain. It's good for your mental health in general, right? Talk to different people, find podcasts, find programs, find trainings. I do trainings. I'm going to be doing a bunch of trainings for the mighty in the coming kind of weeks and months. I just did one last month. It went super well. We're thinking of doing one or more a month, right? That are just tools, just tactics show up, right? keep showing up it is the most important thing that you can do for yourself and again this is something like brad and i still actively work with our mental health Mm -hmm. because it's so important right just like it doesn't stop it doesn't stop you you work out you know you keep swimming you you know you keep (laughs) lifting weights you keep you know doing cardio because you keep yourself healthy and you want to just get more fit and more healthy and you do the same with your mental health right so like right now you're at a point where like you know, maybe you're not quite doing enough. And what needs to happen now is you need to build that foundation for these these lifelong habits, these lifelong strategies. And, you know, Brad made a really good point. And again, this is kind of the, the hug and the kick of the butt part. Do not rely on anyone for your life, for your mental health. 
Do not wait for the VA. Do not wait for insurance to approve you. Do not fight with people. I mean, feel, feel free to fight, but do not rely on disability money or rely on inheritance money or rely on your spouse paying for, for things. Like, it, unfortunately, this is life, right? And life costs money, right? And so help cost money, right? We live in this economy that that's just the way that it works, right? So no matter kind of what avenue you're going, it it is likely going to cost you money. And that's just the way the world works. So we need to accept that and we need to find a way to make it work. Last week and Monday, we talked about, you know, thinking about how can I, we talked about the little engine that could, how can I? You need to create this mindset that is ruthlessly looking for how can I, right? And going into the pain and saying, okay, this, you know, this type of therapy is going to cost this much. This training is going to cost this much. This, what I mean, book. podcasts don't cost anything, right? But, but this book and there, you know, the trainings I'm doing with the mighty are free, but that's not the point, right? How can I make this work? How can I maybe go to therapy more? How can I go to therapy two, three times a week? Because I do like it. I do feel like it's helping. Mm-hmm. How can I do more? How can I read more? How can I listen to more audiobooks? Okay, well, Audible is what? $9 a month, right? Okay, so swap Netflix for Audible. You know, like, like how can I is so important when it comes to this journey and taking recovery into your own hands. Yeah, and spending money is one one thing, and some people don't even like to spend time or they don't even like to, um, like, they won't even spend, like, the two hours that Kayleen does putting on her training. Like, they're so, like, like, what am I trying to say? Like they think they're so busy, right? And they don't ask themselves, how can I make time for this, right? You're spending more than just your money. You're spending your time. How are you spending your time? And you really think of it in that way. How am I spending my time? And you have a limited m- amount of time on this planet. Are you going to spend it doing something that's going to numb your pain and hurt you? Or are you going to spend it doing something that's going to progress you further and actually make you fulfilled and happy in life? Right. And that can be a tough choice in, in the position of, you know, feeling kind of hopeless and and being in so much pain it's tough and sometimes like we self-sabotage right and you know we want to do the things that are good for us but we don't and sometimes you know every now and then I do a depression master class and I define what energy is and this is really important because it's really tricky and really important when you're in that point where you feel like you want to do things that are good for you, but you still can't get yourself to do it. Yeah. It's the and exact opposite thing you want to hear. Yeah. You're going to hate <laughs> Which this. is usually the best advice. Yep. So energy is the capacity or power to do work such as move an object by the application of force. So energy is the capacity or power to do work such as move an object by the application of force, right? The key word there is force. Unfortunately, that's the key word. That is what energy is. You have to force it at first, right? And once you get the ball rolling, it gets a lot easier. And that's, you know, momentum. And that's kind of our ultimate goal. But sometimes when you're in that hard spot, when you feel stuck, when you feel like you can't do anything, it's the application of force that really, really will help you, right? So like force yourself to show up to a training. You're already at the podcast, which is awesome. Right. Keep that going and, Mm. you know, show up for one of the recovery trainings or show up to one of the mighty trainings or, you know, show up to the anxiety relief tools training, like keep showing up. And that is, you know, it's, it's hard to hear, but it is truly, truly what is, is needed. Yeah. You need to force yourself to go do stuff when you're depressed, anything like you're going to have, you're going to have so like so many parts of you fighting yourself to do the things that you need to do. So you're gonna have to force yourself to do it. That's just the reality. And like some people tell you that like you should just like do what you want or like let things happen as they happen or like, you know, take your time, you know, you'll feel better in time, but like, you're going to have to force it at times, not all the time, but like, especially in the beginning, when you're in that dark place, you're going to have to force yourself to do that. Cause you're going to have all, all these forces wanting you to do something else, something destructive to stay where you are, to click play on the next Netflix or to grab another tub of ice cream. That's what it was for me. Um, but you have to force yourself out of there. It's going to be painful. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult, but it's not going to be more difficult than staying in that cycle of pain. Right. And always, as with everything we say, you know, we never want to be beating ourselves up, right? There's going to be moments where you can force it, right? And it, and you, you genuinely force it and you, you do the thing you needed to do and great. And now you have some momentum. And then there's going to be moments where you try so hard to force it and you don't, mm-hmm. right? And don't beat yourself up. You're human, right? You're hurt. That's okay. We're not saying to beat yourself up by any regard, right? Just there are moments that you need to push yourself 
right? And step out of that. Yeah. I, w- I won't call it a comfort zone. I don't think that depression is a comfort <laughs> zone, but step out of that hard place and try to take a step forward yeah. and try to take a step out just for a minute. Yeah. It's perceived comfort zone, mm-hmm. right? Um, I guess <laughs> on some level. Okay. So our action today, take recovery into your own hands. Think, how can I, Mm -hmm. you know, what are you currently doing? Ask yourself right now, what are you currently doing to help yourself get better? What are you currently doing to help yourself get better? Mm -hmm. Think of the answer for a second. Now, once you have the answer, what are you currently doing to help yourself get better? Ask yourself, how much time it takes to do that thing. How much time are you putting in to that thing per week, per day, per month? Mm -hmm. How much time are you dedicating to this? Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, we're struggling with PTSD and it's, you know, we're at rock bottom a lot of times, right? A lot of people Mm -hmm. I talk to are are at rock bottom, right? Or or very, very close to it. And, you know, they're always telling me, you know, I want to support my family. I want to help. Um, my spouse I want to provide for my family I want to start a business I want to do all these things and then you know when I ask them okay like what are you currently doing to try to help yourself get better the the answer is very very dismal right which is like well I'm not I'm not really doing anything right or you know I'm I'm trying to get out and walk a couple times a week and that's okay that's something but think about what we just talked about here the 50 minute myth or like maybe it's I'm going to therapy once a month because that's what insurance covers think about that so what are you currently doing to try to help yourself get better and think about is it enough right now brad and i are in an amazing place completely fully healed from his ptsd my cptsd and like just i mean to be honest genuinely way above average in the area of mental health like really really strong very focused very clear mental people right and we still are probably spending an hour and a half a day on our mental health, right? I feel like that's accurate. I would say it varies between half hour and hour and a half. Half For hour, me. hour yeah. and a half Yeah. a day. Minimum half if hour. If we include exercise, okay? If so you include exercise, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. an hour, hour and a half a day, whatever it is, 45 minutes, we'll call yeah. it eight, 45 minutes a day. We're still spending that 45 minutes a day on our mental health, Mm -hmm. right? And so we just talked about the 50 minute myth, which was 50 minutes a week is not enough. We're spending almost 50 minutes a day on average on our mental health. So think about what you're doing, is it enough? And how can you do more, right? Bring that how can I mindset and attitude into your life? How can I do more? Okay, what do I need to do? How can I do more? Yeah, yeah. And I still have those moments where I spend like a few hours, hours or four or five hours just on my, my mental health. And it's on, it's on a different level than when you're working through PTSD, but it's always a focus. Everything in your life works through your brain. <laughs> everything, everything, everything starts in your brain and it, it doesn't make any sense to not take care of your brain and your mental health. It just, everything, hap- everything, it's impossible for anything not to happen in your brain. Everything in, in the exterior world is interpreted by your brain. So take care of it. Take that time, take recovery into your own hands. Um, And if you're going through this and you're like, okay, like I want to do all this work. I want to work on myself. I want to, you know, do what you did, Brad, and like spend a week working on myself, but I have no idea what to do. Um, Right now, Kayleen's running a free training showing you exactly um, how we were both able to fully recover and how Kayleen has helped people all over the world fully recover from PTSD. So if you don't know what to do, definitely check that out. There's a link below in the description under the resources and um or you could go to overcomingptsd.info slash go that's overcomingptsd.info slash go and that will bring you to the training where you just register sign up it's online it's anywhere in the world um but take the time you know spend that time how are you spending your time spend that time on something that's going to help you recover and there's really no better way to spend your time than than learning um how to overcome this thing. Cause like everything, everything in your life is, has been affected or is being affected, affected, mm. <laughs> affected <laughs> <laughs> by your PTSD. So like you need to dedicate a lot of time on it. And uh, if you did that exercise and 
that Keenly told you to do, how much time are you spending on yourself, working on yourself per week? Um, it could be zero, you know? So like make this, like draw the line in the sand and make today the day that you change and that you make that decision to, you know, move forward and take recovery into your own hands. Um, because we're here to help. We want to help you make that because we know it's completely possible. And a big, a, one of the biggest reasons why people don't do that is because they believe they believe that they can do it in 50 minutes a week or less, or they, they, they believe that it's just going to heal in time. And that's zero <laughs> minutes a week. Um, and that's the thing that holds 99.9% of people back <laughs> made up statistic, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, that's what we see time and time and time and time again. Is that like people, people even say like, like, no, you're not, you're not fully recovered. You're like, all right, all right. All right. Well, like I sp I've spent thousands and thousands of hours working on myself. It's like, I, I can do it. How much time have you spent on it? You know, but like you, it takes, it takes time. It takes a ton of effort and that's just the reality of it. And you just have to accept that and get started and get started today. Um, cause there's no tomorrow. We got to always work today in the present. That's it. <laughs> yep. That's all I got. All right, so some final words. Thank you for being with us here today. We hope you enjoyed the 50-minute myth. One I of love our, this one. One of our favorite kind of things to talk about. A lot of myths when it comes to PTSD, and this is definitely one of our favorites, especially when we hear it in, like, normal conversation with our friends. Um, that's a personal favorite when it comes up in our in our outside of work life. Yeah. Uh, that's so it, when we talk about it outside of work, it usually means we're really, really, really enjoying <laughs> talking about it. But some final words here today, you know, if you like the podcast, if you like the, the YouTube, you know, please share it. We want to reach as many people as possible. If it helped you at all, if it opened your eyes, if it just gave you a positive input for a little bit, it's, you know, it's going to do that for someone else. And we want to reach the world with this message because it's so, so, so important. So, you know, whether that's, sharing it on Facebook or in Facebook groups or whatever it is, email list. I always say you can start an email chain like it's the 90s. You know, do whatever you need to do to get the message out there to help <laughs> as many people as you can. And, you know, if you like us or if you hate us, make sure that you rate us. It helps us reach more people, rank higher, I guess, or something. So that helps. <laughs> or something. Or something, you know. So we, we really appreciate that. And, of course, subscribe. Monday's our motivation. Tuesday's our PTSD book club. Wednesday's like today are our PTSD recovery workshop and Thursdays are PTSD and relationships. Fridays are PTSD Q and A's. So if you have a question, email me, my email is going to be in the description below and definitely go see that training. Don't fall into the 15 minute myth. And we are here for you. We believe in you. We love you. We know that you can do this. And that's why we do this to help you with this belief, to help you with the actions, to help you, to give to you for free because we know it can be challenging out there and in those positions. And we've been there. It comes from a place of pain and a, pa a place of love. So we, we want to help you. We're here for you. Let us know what we can do for you. And we will see you all tomorrow. See you later. All right. Bye-bye.